I know her. Got her on, got her on speed dial. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If we can start migrating towards this area, uh, I believe they're probably signing in a little bit. Let's wait a few for them. Uh, let everyone get over here, and we can go ahead and get started with the ceremony. I very much appreciate everyone coming out today. Uh, the good Lord has given us a beautiful day to do this. Uh, so if you'll just be patient with us, we can get it started. But I would like, I, I have people uh, that I know are actually involved in this, looking at the historical society pictures. So as soon as we can get everyone over, we can go ahead and get started and get this show going. So again, there's also some chairs up here if you want to get out of the sun. Uh, feel free. No, no. Just come on up, join us. Uh, does anyone like to come up? You can get out of the sun. There's probably about five chairs open up here. To start this off, what I'm going to ask is calling, calling Councilman King to actually provide the invocation. If I can, please ask that everyone please remove hats and bow for, the, for a prayer. Father in heaven, we ask for your, your wisdom and, and your oversight of this ceremony today. Father, it seems somewhat appropriate that it follows the 9-11 memorial, father of the 3,000 people who lost their lives that day, 3,000, or 343 of them were the firefighters. Father, we ask that you watch over those who run toward danger rather than run away from it. Father, these, these folks who, who keep us safe, who guard over us every day, Father, we just ask your protection. Father, we ask that this, uh, this ground be a hollow ground each time we see it, each time we remember this area, that we remember those who, uh, who protect us and, and fight for us. Father, it's in your holy name that all of this is commended. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. And now what we'll have is pack. Color Guard attention. Color Guard advance. Color Guard post the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. Two. Color guard dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, PAC-243. Can I give them a round of hand? Great job, guys. Great job. So, so first, just to introduce myself, my name is Mike. Uh, it's just Mike. Uh, I'm just a sexy guy that got helped a lot by these guys. Uh, well, I'm, thank you very much for joining today. I thank the city for all the help you've given me to try to help put this together. It's, it's a great day. So, to start it off, we will uh, hear from our great mayor. 
a few words from Mr. Mayor himself. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we dedicated this park not too long ago, and you see how beautiful it is and what it has to do uh, with our volunteer spirit, our volunteer firemen over the years, and now going into it paid full. Uh, we can't thank our firemen enough and all our safety folks. And uh, this park is so beautiful, and it's used every day. The children get to enjoy it, and so uh, I think it's such a great asset, and it wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for volunteers. And so. Uh, today we're here again to honor our volunteers uh, through the Park Pals and uh, I want to thank PAC 243. They open our meetings too. They do a great job and uh, thanks. I appreciate y'all for being here out this evening or this afternoon. Um, I just want to start out by saying uh, volunteer groups, they, they come and they go and uh, it takes support uh, from the community to be involved in them and uh, I've known Mike Kellum for 15 years and uh, Mike has always been on the sidelines. Uh, our boys play uh, ball together through the Saxe Sports Association, and uh, and I was thrilled in the last uh, couple of years to see Mike get involved and, 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 and put these kind of events together. So Mike, thank you for giving your time, and I'm glad you're involved and, and, and out front now because you're a good leader and I appreciate you. So I just want to thank Mike for the Saxe Park Pals. Um, I want to thank everyone that's joined us here this morning. Thank you for being here. If you're a visitor to Saxe, welcome to Saxe. We're so glad you're here today, and uh, we're happy that you're a part of this dedication event. Uh, Saxe Park Pals for and Saxe Park Pals for organizing this event. Our Saxe Park Pals was created to increase private and public commitment to Saxe's park system. Saxe Parks are extraordinary public assets that offer a unique opportunity to enhance our city and ensure that our small town way is maintained. Saxe Park Pals have strived to help and do ver in their various ways. One way they have done that is through partnerships. These partnerships allow us to work together to enhance our parks for all to enjoy, and this is why we're here today. So at this time, we will recognize with Mike the uh, uh, sponsors the uh, community sponsors that we have today. So Mike, thank you again for your work you put in today. And uh, this dedication is just beautiful and I'm so proud, so proud to live in Saxe. And I'm proud of each citizen that's here and each volunteer that we have in our city. Thank you, Mayor. So if we can, what we'd like to do is recognize our sponsors. There's, it goes from citizens to businesses throughout Saxe to uh, just individuals themselves that really want to contribute to enhance the park systems in Saxe for every citizen to enjoy. So at this time, starting out, what I'd like to do is if I can recognize and ask to come forward, if you're here, our silver sponsors. We'll start out with, we have Pam, who's actually a community liaison of Representative uh, Angie Chen Button. Okay. Uh, she's actually one of our silver sponsors. Pam, if you could just come up, please. Tricia and Lanton Chance, Lindsay. Lance? Oh, sorry. I always get confused because I'm on the part board. Chance. <laughs> Chance, Lindsay. Chung Lee. I believe Becky's not able to be here. She's actually at a volleyball tournament. And Miss Janet Harris. Is Miss Janet Harris here? Okay, and if you can, maybe if we can get over here, and y'all can take a picture with Mike, so we can recognize. Yes, can you please? Hold on, sweaty. Just one second. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the next is actually our Gold Community Partners. Uh, the Gold Community Partners, we had actually discovered dentistry of Saxe. I'm not sure if either of the doctors are here. I, kept, I haven't seen them. Okay. 
Mex uh, Best Western Plus, Wiley End. And then we had Christine Johnson. Is Christine here? Ah. I'll take this. Okay, this is Christine. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, get a picture with you. Again, we very much thank our, our Gold Community Partners. Okay. Thank you. And last but not least is our Platinum Community Partners. These, uh, these guys actually were vital to us being able to put this in. Uh, we actually have Walmart Saxy who contribute to this. I'm not sure if Walmart is here today. Uh, we also had the uh, Friends of Pudge, which that's Jody. You can say who it is. Yes. Friends of Pudge. Uh, and, and this is uh, Walmart Neighborhood Market 6851. How about uh, Wingstop Saxy? Well, no, this is actually Wingstop. Wingstop? Yes. Great chicken meat. Uh, that should be it. So both Walmart, Walmart's not here. Okay. So there's Norma. There's another Wingstop. So these are friends of Pudge as well as a mama Pudge. <laughs> and sister. Whoa, missing the mother. Come on, mom. Come on, mom. Here, let me move chairs out for you. Let me move chairs. You want me to bring the uh, walker? You need my walker? Been a little while since I've used a uh, a disposable film camera. I forgot they still make. Awesome. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Can we all give them a round of applause? Thank all the community sponsors are helping to us to actually have sexy helping us to do things that we thought we could never be done. Okay. Continuing with the. speaker will be a word from Tyree Williams with our Chamber of Commerce here. Uh, Tyree. Thank you, Mike. I'm honored to be here on, on behalf of the Saxe Chamber of Commerce. 
I think what we're seeing here today is why we live in Saxe, Texas. We're honoring our past, we're doing our present, and it's, I think we um, are very honored to be in this city. You said twice in this city. Anyway, I think this is great that we have a cause that we got behind. The citizens made it happen, and so did the city. So it's a great combination, and I think at this point, I think everybody, we've applauded a few people, I think everybody needs to give themselves a round of applause for what is going on here today. Thanks. Thanks, Tyree. So now we recognize our sponsors, we see what's there, now we get to see why we did it all. So what I've asked is, Ms. Trisha Lindsay, she's with the Saxe Historical Society. She's going to give us a brief history of all the things that these guys have actually done for us. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Volunteers are often the people who see a problem or need in their community, and they're willing to step up to fill that role. They may not have the perfect answers or solutions, but they're willing to give it their time, talent, blood, sweat, tears, and heart to the projects. In 1961, there was a problem. Saxe needed to be able to respond to its own emergencies. I'm sure there was a tipping point to get to this particular decision. Maybe another house burned down before Garland could get out here. Maybe there was a very bad accident that left people feeling helpless. Whatever that particular story is, we do not know it. But we do know that in September of 1961, the first roll call of Saxe Fire Department recorded 16 men who stepped up not only to volunteer to the call of fire, but to give the citizens of Saxe a peace of mind. As most big time-consuming projects go, if one spouse joins, the other usually follows. This held true in 1961 when the ladies' auxiliary was formed by the wives of the firemen. That conversation amongst the ladies probably went something along the lines of, well, the guys have decided to become firemen. We probably should tag along and make sure they don't get into any trouble. The first fire chief was Tommy Turner, and his wife, Mary Lou Turner, was the first president in the ladies' auxiliary. The first fire station was a wood building next to Hudson's Grocery Store on 78, between 3rd Street and Saxe Road. A pole between the structures provided a place for a siren and a telephone with a loud bell. Leo and Clee Hudson could hear the phone from the store and would answer the call and then alert the volunteers. In 1965, James Whitfield, known as Fred, became chief. By now, Saxe needed a new fire station. The men, themselves, signed a 10-year personal note to purchase the building at 6232 Highway 78. That note was paid off by 1968 with the funds raised by the ladies' auxiliary and the firemen. That building is still being used by the city today. The organizations also bought the old Saxe Christian Church Parsonage to be used as a community center. A library was set up in two rooms and books were purchased with donations made by the ladies. The city was invited to set up the, their city offices in the center moving their city offices out of the little pump house that's located underneath the water tower on 5th Street. In 1969, Joe Stone became fire chief, a position he would hold until 1986. A new grass truck was bought to handle all the grass fires. Radio equipment, mobile units for the trucks, resuscitators, generators, lights, the list goes on and on throughout the years. But it's not just buying equipment, it's learning about the equipment, how to use it, how to make it work when it really doesn't want to cooperate. Just how much space do you need to stop a one-ton truck when the brakes don't really want to cooperate? How much more space do you need to stop a one-ton truck when it's icy? And yeah, those safety st straps on the back of the grass truck, they're to keep you from falling off. How much does that mirror really tell you about your location? To ditches, trees, poles, and so on. And when it's eight degrees outside, the water will freeze in the tanks. Education is also key. It's 
always key. The men had in-house training. They learned everything from how to use their equipment, different techniques to help out the citizens. They learned about the structures in Saxe. They learned um, everything in the churches. They mapped these buildings. They mapped our streets. They knew where the fire plugs were. They learned how to get in and out of buildings safely. They also took training classes with the other departments in the area. They took training through state programs. They earned certificates and credentials, moving them up in the ranks. The ladies too, they learned about fire safety, drug abuse, radio operating, counseling, CPR, and anything they could do to help the men out in the community. Fundraising is always a challenge, but these two groups met this head on. They held bake sales, rummage sales, had pancake breakfasts, ice cream socials, raffles, barbecue dinners that even the train would stop on 78 so they could stop and get some food. I've also heard rumor that there was a circus complete with elephants and a very large snake. It wasn't all about the fire stations. Both groups participated in blood drives, the United Way. They aided needed families at Christmas. There was a Miss Flame contest that also served as a fundraiser. There was a Christmas party every year, and there was even donkey ball. Cards were sent and meals were made for families who needed it. Times change, and with that, the two groups change. The Ladies Auxiliary disbanded in 1991, and in 2004, the Saxe to Fire Department began moving to a paid format. We have had over 350 volunteers in the Ladies Auxiliary and Saxe Fire Department. Volunteers, you have stories about the infamous little plane crash, the train derailment, the semi that decided he didn't really want to stop for the train. There are stories about the kids, how excited they got when the fire truck came to school. There are stories that aren't written down yet, but that's a project for another day. We have had five fire chiefs in our city. We've had new fire stations built, new equipment being purchased, new buildings now house our library, and our city offices. Much has changed, but some things have not changed. The desire to step up and feel a need in the community is still around us. It is represented in this park today. Thank you for joining us today as we say thank you to the volunteers that have come before us. Thank you, Trish. So it's great to hear about the past, a little bit of Saxe's past. Now, how about we hear a little bit about how this equipment actually started? I guess with that, what we get is a word from our past president of the Volunteer Association, Jody Crescent. Thank you, Mike. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here today. I want to uh, thank you, the uh, Parks Board and the PALS and what that put all this together. Uh, I want to speak a little bit today on what we did as volunteers throughout the years. Uh, Trish named off all the activities that have taken place over the years and the chiefs that have pushed us along over the years all the way up to the end of, of uh, Chief Kendrick being here as well. Uh, all these bricks and help immortalize or help tribute to all those who served here over these years. The names on there, some have passed or gone now, but uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears put into all that that went over the years of, of working together having a good time, enjoying ourselves, and fulfilling the need for the community at the time. Uh, I've served my time as well as for seven years as a volunteer before I moved into working part-time and now as a career firefighter working full-time and hopefully do another 20 years here to uh, fulfill my retirement and make it a good living. Uh, a lot of those bricks have immortalized the people and the chiefs that have been here and luckily we never lost anybody in our department from an accident or death in related to a, a scene that we were at. Uh, we helped a lot of people along the way, uh, being for fires or, or medical emergencies, but we did tribute to uh, Greg Simmons, or as we knew him as Pudge, and have a bench there memorializing him for his uh, line of duty loss in uh, Gorman at the time when he worked the fire scenes out there. Uh, we. Trish spoke of all the things that the firemen and the ladies of the auxiliary did for many years to put things together. They helped fund everything throughout the years. The city didn't have money to pay for everything all the time. And in the very early age of the department, the uh, auxiliary and the firefighters paid for themselves. 
and that's where the fundraisers came in. We did haunted houses, uh, they did bake sales, garage sales, uh, the pancake breakfast, everything that evolved over the years to help contribute those funds together to pay for what we had and what we needed. Uh, everything from the fuel that went to the engines to buying the engines themselves and the equipment we had to use with it. We uh, had, at the end of the times of the Volunteer Association, we had funds left over and we didn't know quite what to do with it. We wanted, we know we wanted to get back to the community as we always have through the time we served in the department, but we sponsored baseball teams and other events throughout the city during the time to help along with our community. And then at the end, uh, we decided that we wanted to attribute even more to the citizens and we were able to donate funds to help purchase the park that we have here with us today. We worked uh, with the parks board and with the designers on that to try to fit in what we could and, and thankfully to the, the city who uh, donated the park and put this all together for us the last couple of years and able to get this thing finally contributed to us. I want to thank Mike and the uh, parks pals, and Trish and Chance, everybody who worked just so diligently to have a tribute for us to recognize those who served their community over these years. and. To the uh, Parks Board themselves for allowing it to happen, as well as the City Council, Mayor Mike Felix, uh, our fire, current Fire Chief Rick Coleman, and uh, our Mayor and our City Manager. Uh, we, we thank you very much from the guys who have served here, the ones who are names are listed over there on those bricks. We really thank you and thank for the citizens that are here today and who's contributed through us throughout the years. Uh, without your teamwork, our team couldn't have succeeded at all and help lead us into having this full-time department we have now and the equipment we do and the leadership we have to push us forward. So again, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you for who's contributed and uh, thank you for the men and women who served this department and, and made it what it is today. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. So, uh, for the fire department, our last actual chief that we had that was part of the volunteer fire department was actually Chief Kendrick, and he's here today. Can I ask you to come up and give a few words? Two words. So precise. It is an honor to be here. Um, as serving on the volunteer fire department to the career fire department, it was an honor as far as for me to serve this community as their fire chief when I retired in 2013. Um, the volunteers, as we grew up, want you to know for those that just came to Saxe a few years ago and didn't know about the volunteers, as you've heard all morning long, a dedicated group. And the same dedicated group has passed on to the career firefighters as some of the career firefighters that you have now have and were on the volunteer fire department as well. Um, as a volunteer fire department, these guys, we all train. And what I want to say by that training is, is that these guys took their vacation time, time off from work, vacation time, to be training, and that's how dedicated they were to this city to provide that training and that experience and put it here in, in, the, in the city to protect this city. So it, it's always been an honor for me to serve this city, to serve the citizens. Um, Without that support starting way back when, Saxe Fire Rescue wouldn't be where we are today because that footprint started that many years ago and has developed into the what you see today. So it's, it's so much an honor to be here and, and I do appreciate it because these guys train a lot, mean a lot, and for that I want to thank the community for their support because that's how we got here today is from that support. The one thing that I want to do mention about the training part, you've heard about the training, is that we actually did a live fire training one time at the mayor's house. He'll always, he'll always remember it when he's trying to do some plumbing and he caught his house on fire. So, <laughs> so but anyway, for the community, for my brothers out there and sisters that are in the service and, and police officers aware, God bless y'all, and thank you so much for the opportunity of being here. Thank you. So we're about to do a ribbon cutting ceremony. We'll do it over there at the gate. Before I do that, I feel I must end this. I know we've heard a lot about firefighters, a lot about ladies auxiliary, but I must be honest with you. 
say, I've lived in Saxony close to 30 years. They're just one example of the volunteerism that made this city what it is today. There's just one. From Friends of the Library to the, to the Animal Shelter to our very own CERT guys who are out serving us lunch today and helped me set all this up. Can we please give these guys a round of applause? But it is really, and what I hope, and when we talked about this initially, we talked about the project, really, you know, we, we very much respect the volunteer fire department, the ladies auxiliary, but they were an example. What we were hoping to give by a tribute over here is that when families actually come and visit this park, it's a very popular park. Maybe our children will get some, some resemblance of what, what it is to be in Saxony. Look at all the volunteers that were here that helped made it the city you love so much. That's what we're looking for. So right now, if we can, I guess if I can get the sponsors and the mayor over here, let's do a ribbon cutting ceremony and let's open this thing up like we want it open for all of Saxony to see. So it'll be right over here at the gate entry. Okay? So if we can kind of migrate that way, it'll work. Thank you. Tricia and Chance. Part of this, uh, thank you. part of the park house, park, park house, but also volleyball. So, CERT actually has hot dogs, drinks, and galore over over by the food entries. Feel free to grab some, fill up. Kids, feel free to explore a fire truck. We'll be over there taking pictures if you want to become the future fireman of Saxon. I very much thank everybody for joining us today. Guys, if you are here and you are one of the names that are on our tribute, or if you're a spouse, daughter, son, whatever, if we could get a picture of all of you over by the tribute, that would be great. Also, there is next to the registration table, there are some pictures and a couple pieces of paper. If you know the guys in the picture, please write the names down, um, kind of number the pictures or whatever. It would be great. Leave your number if you can help us in the future. We've got a lot of pictures with a lot of blank spaces on the back. Thank you guys so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Get some good pictures.
Thank you. Find your names. You can walk on. It's okay. It's not going to go anywhere. Yes, sir. Can you get a picture with the yes,